Hey guys, long time no see. Oh my gosh, I'm back. I'm alive and well. <laughs> and um, today I'm going to show you how to put the intervals together with a hand pattern exercise that will help you get around the fingerboard. It's going to help you with string crossings. My hair. It's not going to help you with my hair. It is going to help you um, with your your understanding of the intervals and how they how they fit together in pa patterns across strings and on one string and between strings and all of that so that you can be consistently more in tune and so that when you start to shift your fingers will understand how they relate to each other and what it should sound like right so for example in your basic hand pattern from first finger over to third finger on the other string in your basic hand pattern which looks like this right this is our basic hand pattern there we go yes so if I take my first finger, put it over here, this pattern right here, if I have it on one string, this pattern is a minor third. A minor third is a whole step plus a half step. But if I take it and I put it on the upper string, let me just sort myself out. If I put this on the upper string, the, the pattern is still a minor third, but it's on a different string. This is a minor seventh. A minor seventh sounds like there's a place for us, right? From West Side Story. So every single time. So if I decide to do this in third position, same pattern, it's still a minor seventh. If I decide to do it somewhere up here, it's still a minor seventh. You just have to feel out the whole steps. And as you get higher and higher up the fingerboard, your intervals get closer and closer and closer together until a whole step is almost feeling like a half step. So um, that's just one example. So let's just get right into it. So you may already be familiar, I honestly don't know if I've made a video about this before. So we're gonna just run, run through it. I'm just gonna make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna do this first by starting on one string. I've got my tuner right here. And I like to put it on 441. So I'm gonna check my inner ear against the tuner. So I'm not looking for the at the tuner to see, you know, to tell me if I'm in tune. Of course I'm I'm I am looking at it to to tell me if I'm in tune. But really the the real tuner is here. So if I can hear do re mi in my head, I'm going to check it and make sure I'm accurate against the tuner. So the tuner is going to tell you how accurate your inner ear is. Right? And if your inner ear is a little bit out, then that's fine. Let's say you have a range of this rather than super tight. You can work gradually on bringing it closer and closer in with the tuner. But anyway, let's start with Do Re Mi. Now, because we're gonna be working with patterns, we want everything to be super consistent. Right, we're doing something very, very precise over here. So make sure that your posture is good that your two points here are good, that your wrist is straight, that the elbow is in the correct place for the right string, whatever string you're on. Okay, fingers touching the string well. And we're gonna start with Do, Re, Mi. So I'm gonna kind of slouch so you can see. So, okay, pretty close. I'm gonna do that three times. playing the F sharp a couple hairs too sharp. Interesting. And one more time. Okay. Now I'm going to add the only half step that we have in this hand pattern between two and three right here. And you hear how it rings at the end? It's picking up overtones and um, it helps the string, other strings vibrate as well. Okay. Finally, we have Do, Re, I really hope you can see my left hand. Ooh. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to do this all over again. It's the lighting kind of behind me. Okay, that's good. So we have Do Re. When you put fourth finger down, try not to touch the other string so that the other string can vibrate. If you hear that ring, it's because the, the open string above is vibrating. If I kind of hit that, 
it, it sounds a bit dead. So I don't know if you can if you can tell that. Okay, so that's our seconds. Let's do some thirds. So every other note, start with open two. Now I'm doing this too fast. You should be practicing this very slowly so that you can understand how your fingers feel and so that you can really hear the pitch. So let's slow that down. There we go. It's a lot more accurate when you're slow. Okay, and also the tuner can hear you better. Okay, so one to three now. What kind of pattern is this? Or what interval is this from one to three? If any of you said made minor third, minor third, you're right. <laughs> okay, so now we have two to four. If you want to check and make sure that your pattern's really tight, check third finger. Because a lot of times when we do fourth finger, third finger kind of goes along with it or kind of sits in the middle, but this isn't the right hand pattern and you've trained your hand wrong. So we want to train it right. So let's check it. There we go. So if you hear, your pattern is wrong and you can just see this pattern isn't right. There we go, tight together. So that's our thirds. We're gonna add a string crossing now. So I want you to watch how I use my fingers. I'm gonna go from third finger to first finger. So I'm keeping them basically in the pattern. So I'm not doing where they're just kind of all leaving. They're kind of all hovering in the correct place. Okay, all right. I feel like you can't really see me very well. Okay. Is that okay? The light. I'm sorry. It's just that if I move, then you won't be able to see me, <laughs> so maybe I'm just crazy. There. Okay, so after thirds, we have a perfect fourth. And you see how I set all my fingers down? And then we have one four. See how third finger sets down? In this exercise, you're not always going to use your fingers like this when you play music, but this exercise is training your hand to remember distances and spaces. So that's why we're doing this. You can set third finger first, if that helps. There's no shame in that, that's fine. Okay, so now we have a perfect fifth. I'm gonna do the perfect fifth for this um, exercise. I'm actually putting first finger, third finger, and fourth finger down. A lot of times with fourth finger, we tend to do this, but this, this is wrong for two reasons. First reason, fourth finger is one of your weakest fingers and it doesn't have any help holding the string down. It's higher here. The string tension is a little higher than it is here, so it's already harder. The second reason is that if you have to play, and, well, I guess the second reason is that these fingers here, wiggle wiggle, add a lot of extra tension to the hand if they're up like this. So you may feel like this is easier, but actually it's not. You see my hand, see the tendons there? They're not happy. Here, they're a lot more relaxed. Here, they're really tense. Relaxed, tense. Okay, and I guess there's another reason. If your fingers are all out here, what if you have to play one of them after you play fourth finger, you're gonna have no idea where to put it. So, especially if you need to do a string crossing or something. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the perfect fifth like this. Set, set, set. Until eventually you can just put them all down. Check third finger. 
Okay, so that is all on one string. You can do up to a perfect fifth on one string in first position. Um, so now we're going to add some string crossings. And string crossings are places where intonation starts to go a little bit. Excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the next possible interval up from a perfect fifth is a minor six. Okay? A minor six, there's only one place we have a minor six in the basic hand pattern. It's between two and three. So a minor six hand pattern, a minor six is always, always, always a half step, but between two strings. So you can see one finger, my second finger is on the bottom string, my third finger is on the upper string. If we reverse that, this is not a minor six, this is something else. But if you have your kind of um, lower finger on the lower string and your upper finger on the upper string, you have a minor six. And if they're in a half step, you have a minor six. So it sounds like this. And it sounds like the sad NBC song. So I'm gonna add first finger. First finger is right here. It's, um, it's good to add first finger because you have a string crossing for first finger. Starting with second. Move it over. Okay, so this is tricky. First finger might want to kind of move around, but if you're staying true to this minor third pattern right here between one, two, three, this minor third pattern, you can just use your arm to pop you across. You're going to be just fine. You're still keeping the distance between these fingers. So you're not changing the pattern at all or doing this. You're keeping the pattern really precise. Okay. So a minor six hand pattern is always a half step, but it's between two strings. Okay, there's only one half step in the minor, I'm sorry, there's only one half step in the basic hand pattern, so we only have to worry about this one. Okay, other hand patterns, you might have other examples of half steps between the strings, but there's only one for the basic hand pattern. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the major six. So a major six is a whole step between two strings. So we have a few of those. So I'm gonna start with my open, going over to first finger on the upper string. And a major six sounds like the happy NBC. You're gonna cross your third finger back across to that bottom string you started on. And we still have this minor third hand pattern Right? So if I cross over like this, can you see how that's wrong? This interval between one and two is enormous. And you have the muscle memory now, hopefully, to just know that that at least feels wrong. So if you just focus on feeling the whole step between one and two, you use your arm to kind of swing you between the strings instead of reaching across, because if you reach across, you might have a tendency to reach up or, you know, kind of constrict. So focus on feeling the whole step. Pop it across. Okay, so. Okay, three times. So the other place we have a whole step is between first finger and second finger in the basic hand pattern. Now to make it a major six, I'm gonna take my first finger on the bottom string, second finger on the upper string, okay? skip the minor six, we just did that. We're gonna go over to third finger and fourth finger. And you can keep your hand pattern down, this would be great. It's kind of a finger yoga moment. It might be a little bit of a stretch for you. This is um, a, a fingering that you're gonna encounter kind of later on in the Suzuki books. in the um, minuets. This awkward string crossing from four to three. I'm sorry, from three to four. It's it's late here, I've been teaching all day. I'm sorry. So um, it's good to strengthen up this, this interval here, okay? 
Um, and that is it. So those are all of our major sixes. The next interval we have is a minor seventh. So a minor seventh is a minor third, right? A minor third looks like this, one to three between two strings. So if I do open to two on the upper string, is this a minor third hand pattern? If I put it on one string, open to two? Nope, because we have two whole steps. But one to three on one string is a minor third. There we go, I'm gonna just take third finger, put it over here. Now we have a minor six, okay? This is the parking space fairy song. There's a place for us. Okay, so there's another minor seventh between two and four. So if you go back to the previous exercise on one string from two to four, that's the other place we have the minor third. So I'm gonna take fourth finger, put it on the upper string. I'm gonna go ahead and check third finger after I play fourth finger. There we go. To make sure it's not here. Because you see, you can look in the pattern. This is wrong. It should be right here. We should have a nice whole step. Okay. So we only have two minor thirds. One here, one to three, two to four. Put them on other different strings. We're almost done, guys. We have a major seventh. There's only one major seventh. A major seventh is made out of a major third, but on different strings. So I'm gonna go from open to two on the upper string. So if your major third is good, that's your major seventh, okay? Just trying to position my hand out of this light. And then finally, we have the octave. Now an octave is a perfect fourth hand pattern. So a perfect fourth, for example, on one string is open, three, or one to four. So I'm gonna put that between two strings. So I'm gonna start with the open, put three on the upper string. And for those of you who practiced your intervals, an octave is somewhere over the rainbow, right? Nice, and the pattern is solid, so it should be nice and in tune. So the other one we have is between one and four, right? Here comes the bride. So I'm gonna take fourth finger, put it on the upper string. I'm gonna go ahead and check third finger after I play fourth finger, just to make sure that space is good. Let's check the perfect fourth. Okay, so that's all of the intervals. So now to kind of put it all together, because I know you may be lost at this point, let me show you how this exercise works, okay? So you can sit back and watch <laughs> me go through this exercise. Okay, Ooh. Oh. So <clears throat> this might be really boring, but here we go. All right, so I'm starting on one string. So I'm listening before I get to the note. I'm actually trying to hear do re do there, for example. So if I play, I can hear it, that it's wrong. So I'm, my inner ear is working on overtime. So now I'm going to do some thirds. Major third, right? And I'm setting all my fingers down at this point because part of this exercise is to work on muscle memory and feel how the fingers relate to each other.
Okay, I'm gonna do some fourths. Perfect fifth. Check third finger. Okay. Ooh, it's uncomfortable kind of leaning down like that. <laughs> so now I'm going to add some string crossings. So I'm going to be very careful how I use my fingers and over the string crossings and try to feel the pattern really well. So the next interval after a perfect fifth that we have is a minor sixth in this basic hand pattern. So half step across two strings. I'm just going to go ahead and play NBC so I can hear it. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the major sixes. We have a whole step between two strings. Just working on feeling the whole step between one and two as I set them across. Okay, now I have first finger and second finger, whole step across. Skipping two and three, that was the minor six, going on to three and four. If I want to play NBC, this is where the this is the only place the hand pattern changes. You're gonna to have to do a low two for the NBC. Which is kind of nice. You get to feel that whole step, whole step, major third um, pattern. Okay. So now we're on to the minor sevenths. We are now a minor third across two strings. So the minor third that we have, we have two minor thirds. One is between one and three, and the other is between two and four. So. Now two to four. I'm playing the minor seventh, and then a, you know the, the note the, the finger below the minor seventh just to check where it's sitting. So in this case I'm playing two, four, that's the minor seventh, but I'm checking third finger to make sure that third finger is in the right place as well. And I just have to hear a whole step. Three blind mice, right? That's a whole step down. Three blind. Three blind if you're curious. Okay, almost done. We have a major seventh. So we have to start with a major third. There's only one major third in this hand pattern, open two. I'm going to put it across on the other string. And now we have the octave. And one to four. And third finger is there. It's in the right place. Okay, so this may seem like kind of a weird exercise to do, but I'm telling you it's really, really, really going to help you improve your intonation and your sense of pitch and how your fingers relate to each other. This is just in the basic hand pattern. You can do this exercise with all the different hand patterns. So, you know, there's like the low two hand pattern. There's the do, re, mi, one, two, three hand pattern, which looks like this, where one, two, three sound like do, re, mi, right? You can have a half step on top or you can have a whole step on top. Um, and then there's some other different kind of variations of hand patterns where you can shift those three hand patterns down a half step and start with a low one, form the basic hand pattern. You could do low two, you could do the one, two, three, do, re, mi, but you've just shifted it down a half step. So, but that's, that's kind of for another day. Again, when you start to shift into different positions, it's really nice to know how your fingers relate to each other, what the difference is with the spacing, because as you go 
higher you, um, you know, the spaces get a little bit smaller between the notes. So anyway, guys, I hope that was kind of helpful. This is a great exercise for you to do. I would recommend that you start your practices with this, especially using your tuner, because your tuner is going to help you to see what your range of intonation is, what your sense of pitch is. And over time, if you practice slowly, so that you can actually feel and understand what you're doing, then you'll be able to bring the pitch closer and closer together. Okay, so I will see you soon, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you to all the new subscribers and all my, all my old subscribers. I should, I don't know what to call you. I just, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have you. And um, thank you so much for all of your questions and your interaction and subscribing and all of that. I will see you soon. Bye.